We'll see. In our final topic, we are in the final stages of the state budget process. Just two weeks to go before the end of the fiscal year. House and Senate lawmakers are trying to work out differences between each chamber's spending plan. Big differences remain on taxes and on Medicaid expansion. Joe Engels, new bill surfaced this week addressing Medicaid reform, but no real expansion in there. Yeah, no real expansion. And um, I think the problem, if you look at what's going on with the Medicaid, is that a lot of the Republicans really hate it because they see it as Obamacare. And they campaigned against Obamacare, they don't like Obamacare, and they don't want anything that even alludes to that. But what you also see on the other side is that um, there are changes coming. The feds are saying, you know what, we're going to change the way we reimburse Medicaid. We're going to change the way we do business. And if you're not on board, you're not going to get the money that you've been getting in the past. And that poses a huge problem for Ohio because Ohio is a huge Medicaid state. Well, this could pass with, uh, you know, they just put it out on the floor. It's the leadership that's holding this up. And in particular, House Speaker Bill Batchelder is holding up the Medicaid expansion issue. And I think you're right, Joe, it's because this whole Obamacare scarecrow kind of thing, which is bogus because, it, you know, it's going to hurt hospitals who have, and it's going to hurt all, all the providers and the doctors, and they're going to lean on it. And the Republican Party, by the way, it, receives a lot of money from these folks. Yeah, so you have basically a House Speaker himself holding this up. The votes, are, as I understand, are in the Senate, and they're, and they're good. Uh, I was interested in Joe's commentary uh, as to the legislators themselves. I had the feeling from the beginning when this thing first came up that it wasn't the, the members of the House and Senate, that it was, in, in fact, the base. It was the Tea Party people that were opposing and then threatening them, but right. that in the absence of that, that it wouldn't have problems accepting the millions of dollars, that uh, federal dollars that would be coming in with the expansion. Uh, well, so if, they, I, if they would accept it with Democratic votes, they obviously can pass it. Yeah. It, it, it. It won't be a problem in the House either if they'll accept Democratic votes, right, Joe? Right, right, mm -hmm. yes. That's a big thing, and to the, get the Democratic votes in there. Yeah, and the Tea Party then has shown that they're, <coughs> they're not going anywhere and they're not dead, and they've you know, organized a, a grassroots effort to meet with these lawmakers and say, hey, look, you know, this is a lot of money. We have a huge debt right now, federal debt. This is Obamacare. Yeah, but that's an argument concerning federal spending. It's not an argument concerning <laughs> revenues coming to the state of Ohio. You're trying to be rational. Well, yes. <laughs> here's, what they, here's what they would argue, Joe. This is, is Columbus on the record. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, if, uh, the Tea Party is saying, look, we can start here. We can say we're not going to contribute to this broken program, and if other states join us, which they have, we can force change from the ground up. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. That's exactly the position that they're taking. And I think if, if this same program had been advanced by a Republican president or a Republican uh, Congress at the time, uh, then we wouldn't be seeing this kind of opposition. One of the problems when you decide only one party gets to vote on something is you disenfranchise the people who are voters in other communities. The Democratic voters in communities such as Cleveland, where mm -hmm. I'm from, you know, are being disenfranchised in this because they're saying that their representatives and their senators don't count.